fractures of the talus. In this exercise, we will demonstrate the open reduction and internal fixation of a talus neck fracture, followed by a fracture of the lateral process of the talus. 70% of the surface of the talus is covered by cartilage. We will perform our exercise through the anteromedial and the anterolateral approaches. In this exercise, we will not use the posterolateral approach, which runs vertical and parallel to the heel cord, although this approach is very useful when posterior anterior screw fixation is chosen. The anteromedial approach begins over the tubercle of the navicular and ends behind and below the medial malleolus, as illustrated with this graphic. For the incision and the reduction of the fragments, we need this selection of instruments. The incision is made at a right angle to the skin and straight down to the bone. Soft tissue is released using the small periosteal elevator. A small retractor is placed on the neck of the talus to demonstrate the strong talonavicular capsule. The graphic demonstrates the local anatomy. In our model, the fragments must be held together by rubber bands that do not correspond to anatomical ligaments. Before performing the exercise, they should be removed using the scalpel and forceps. Another small retractor is placed below the taller neck. Shown here are the navicular and the teller navicular joint. This is the teller neck and the teller fracture, which ends below the sustentaculum tally. A femoral distractor using the long sleeves is placed between the tibia and the calcaneus on the medial aspect of the leg. The aim is to demonstrate the anterior subtalar joint surface. The subtalar joint space is distracted and the fracture mobilized. Reduction of the fracture using the small periosteal elevator and a small reduction forceps with points. For the implantation of the cannulated screws, you will find the following instruments at your table. A tissue protection sleeve, threaded guide wires, and the direct measuring device to determine the correct screw length. We shall also need the drill guide with stop, consisting of the holder for drill guide inserts, the 2.7 mm drill guide insert, and the 2.7 mm cannulated drill bit. For the 3.5 mm cannulated drill bit and the 3.5 mm cannulated tap, you will need the 3.5 mm insert, the handle with quick coupling, the cannulated countersink, the cannulated hexagonal screwdriver with holding sleeve, and two cannulated screws. After reduction of the fracture on the medial aspect of the bone, fixation of the fracture is obtained using the threaded 1.6 millimeter K wire. After this fixation, the leg is rotated and the lateral aspect of the foot considered for the anterolateral approach. 
This approach begins on the dorsum of the foot and goes obliquely below and anterior to the lateral malleolus towards the heel. This aspect may jeopardize the branches of the sural and peronea superficialis nerves, and therefore this approach must be performed slowly while crossing the subcutaneous layer. Incision of the soft tissue layer and mobilization with the small periosteal elevator. A small retractor is placed proximally around the lateral process of the talus. The graphic demonstrates the local anatomy. The neck of the talus and the anterior process of the calcaneus are demonstrated. For the same reasons as discussed previously for the medial approach, the rubber bands holding the fracture together must be removed. Reduce the lateral aspect of the fracture using the small reduction forceps. Transfiction of the fracture using a threaded 1.6 millimeter K wire. Control of the reduction on the lateral aspect using the small elevator. Now we return to the medial aspect to check the reduction of the fracture. We determine the screw length by measuring the protruding part of the guide wire with the direct measuring device. The drill guide insert is screwed into the holder. The length of the part of the drill bit protruding from the drill guide with stop is checked with the direct measuring device, and the required drill bit length is adjusted by turning the insert. The drill bit should be set at a length of 1 to 2 millimeters shorter than the determined screw length. In order to secure this setting, the knurled nut must always be screwed up to the stop. First, drill the hole using the 2.7 millimeter cannulated drill bit. Countersink the hole to accommodate the head of the screw in the cartilaginous layer of the talus. Tapping of the drill hole using the 3.5 millimeter cannulated tap. The first fragment will be over drilled using the 3.5 cannulated drill bit. Insertion of the 3.5 millimeter cannulated screw. The guide wire is now removed. Control of the reduction using the small elevator before and after removal of the reduction forceps. The same procedure is performed on the lateral aspect of the talus for a lagged 3.5 millimeter cannulated screw fixation.
The femoral distractor can now be released so that we can see how the neck of the talus fits the sustentaculum tally. The same model will be used for fixing the fractured lateral process of the talus. We need this selection of instruments for the 2.7 mm cortex screws. Here we see the posterior facet of the calcaneus and talus, and approximately pediculated large fragment of the lateral process of the talus. Reduction, using a small reduction forceps. Temporary fixation using a 1.6 millimeter threaded K wire. We first choose a two millimeter drill bit for a 2.7 millimeter lag screw fixation in the sagittal plane. Over drilling with the 2.7 millimeter drill bit. Depth measurement. Creating the threads with the 2.7 millimeter tap. And insertion of the appropriate 2.7 millimeter cortex screw. Removal of the temporary K wire and lag screw fixation in the frontal plane. The control of the posterior facet must be very precise and is eased by distracting the joint using the femoral distractor. After removal of the femoral distractor, the congruency of the subtalar joint can be tested.